Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to simplify radical expressions. Remember that we can convert between radical expressions and rational exponents. So we have a couple rules here. As long as you have the exact same index for your radicals, these rules will apply. So the first one is with multiplication or a product rule. If we have two products, A and B, we can keep them together as one radicand under one radical sign, or we can separate them. And then this is also equivalent to this rational exponent format. And the second is if we have a quotient. Again, we can keep the numerator and the denominator together under one radical sign, or we can separate them into two. Whenever you're simplifying, these two steps come in very handy. Step one is to determine the largest perfect nth power factor of the radicand. And then step two, use the product rule to factor out and simplify that perfect nth power. Let's look at some examples to see how that works. So in example one, we're going to simplify the expression, assuming that all variables are positive. Here we're given the square root of 45 divided by the square root of 5. Well, I don't know the square root of 45. And the square root of 5, well, 5 is not a perfect square, so that's not going to be easy. But what happens if I combine them under one radical sign? I have the square root of 45 divided by 5. And 45 divided by 5 simplifies to 9. Well, do we know the square root of 9? Yeah, that one's easy. It's 3. So here it was easiest for us to combine the two radicals under one radical sign. Simplify and then find the radical of that simplified expression. Let's look at example 2. Here we have three products. 16, x to the 4th, and y to the 6th, all under the same radical. I think here it's going to be easiest if we break them apart. So that would give us the square root of 16 times the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of y to the sixth. Well, 16 is a perfect square, so the square root of that is going to be 4. And then we can use rational exponents to convert the square root of x to the fourth. That would be x to the fourth to the power of one half. And then we can do the same thing with y to the sixth. That goes to the power of one half. Then, remember, we multiply those exponents. So we have four, and then we have x to the fourth times one half. So four times one half, that simplifies to just x squared and y to the 6 to the power of 1 half. We have 6 times 1 half, which simplifies to just a power of 3. So this example was easiest if we broke each one apart. Let's look at a couple more examples. Example 3, we have two separate radicals. First, we always want to check, do they have the same index? Yes, they do. They both have an index of 4. So we can combine these if we choose that's the easiest option. Well, I think it's going to be, because I don't know the fourth root of 25. So combining them, we would get the fourth root of 25 times 25 times z times z. Now, I can either multiply all those 25s together or I could realize that that is the same as 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So I have four fives. So I'm going to break this apart now, but keeping the constants together and keeping the variables together in two separate radicals. So I'm going to have the fourth root of these four fives times the fourth root of z squared. Well, the fourth root of these four fives 
is just 5. And we can use rational exponents to simplify the fourth root of z squared. That would be z squared to the power of 1 fourth. Or we get 5 times z to the power of 1 half. And remember what the power of 1 half is? Yeah, that's the same as a square root. How crazy. This one goes from a fourth root down to a simplified square root. Now look at example four. We have two different quotients within two different radicals. But since they have the same index of five, we can combine these. So let's combine them. So I'm going to have the fifth root of seven times a times b squared is my numerator. My denominator is going to be seven a to the sixth b squared. Now notice that that numerator and that denominator have some factors in common. So we can simplify. We can simplify out the b squareds and the sevenths. So that simplifies down to the fifth root of a over a to the sixth. Well, we can use the quotient rule for our exponents, and we know that we take the exponent of the numerator, which is 1 here, and subtract the exponent of the denominator, 6. So that would give us the fifth root of a to the 1 minus 6, or the fifth root of a to the negative 5. Then if we convert that index of 5 to a rational exponent, we would have a to the negative fifth to the power of 1 fifth. We have an exponent raised to an exponent. We can multiply those. So that's a to the negative 5 over 5 or a to the negative 1. And remember, a negative exponent becomes positive if you flip you switch the numerator and the denominator. So we would get 1 over a. Let's look at another example. Wow, look at this one. Again, we're going to use properties of exponents, but here we're also going to use properties of polynomials because look at this. We have a polynomial in our numerator. We're going to assume all radicands are positive. So what do you notice about the polynomial in the numerator? Yeah, it's a perfect square trinomial. So let's factor that. If we factor the numerator, we get x plus 1 times x plus 1 as our new radicand. And that's over the square root of x plus 1. Then, using quotient rule, we can combine those radicands into 1. So we have the radical, or the square root, of x plus 1 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. And because our numerator and our denominator have a factor in common, we can simplify those. So this simplifies down to the square root of just x plus 1. Looked a little scary at first, but it actually wasn't too bad. Let's look at page 2. For these three examples, we need to simplify the radical expression by factoring out the largest perfect nth power. Assume that all variables are positive. So let's factor. Here we have the square root of 8 times x cubed. Well, 8 is the same as 2 times 4. And x cubed is the same as x times x squared. We can now break this into four separate radicals. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of x times the square root of x squared. We can't take the square root of 2 because it's not a perfect square, so that stays as the square root of 2. But the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x, again, not a perfect square, so it stays as the square root of x. 
and then the square root of x squared, well, that would just be x. A little rearranging, and we have 2x times the square root of 2 times the square root of x. Well, since these two square roots have the same index, we can combine them. So they become one radicand. So 2x times the square root of 2x. You'll be able to combine some of these steps as you get a little more comfortable. How about example two? Well, we have a cube root and we have another cube root. I know I can't find the cube root of five or the cube root of t, but I can find the cube root of 125 and not of t. So let's rearrange and get the cube root of 125 by itself. So first step would be to combine all of them. So five times 125 times t times t, all under the cube root. Now we can break it apart into different radicals based on what we can take the cube root of and what we can't. Well, we know we can take the cube root of 125, so let's separate that out. And I know I can't take the cube root of 5 or t times t, which is t squared, so I'll leave that alone. Then I can do the math. The cube root of 125, well, that's 5. And then we're just left with the cube root of 5t squared. See how it's getting a little easier to combine some of the steps? Now let's look at example three. Another cube root. And here we're taking the cube root of 27x squared divided by y cubed. Well, what things can we take cube roots of? The 27 and the y cubed. So what if we break all three of those factors up into their own cube roots? So we would have the cube root of 27x squared first over the cube root of y cubed. Then we can break the numerator up. The cube root of 27 times the cube root of x squared and that's still over the cube root of y cubed. Now we can take the cube root of 27, which is 3. We can't find the cube root of x squared, so that just remains. And then the cube root of y cubed? Well, that's just y. That wasn't too bad. How about an application example? If the pavement is dry cement, then S equals the square root of 25M is an estimate for a car's speed, S, in miles per hour, when it leaves skid marks M feet long. Part A wants us to simplify this formula. Well, let's look at the formula again. We have S equals the square root of 25M. Well, we can break that apart into the square root of 25 times the square root of m. Since 25 is a perfect square, we can calculate that, which is 5. And then the square root of m, we don't know m, so it stays as the square root of m. So we've simplified the formula to s equals 5 square root of m. Now let's look at b. Determine the minimum speed of the car if the skid marks are 100 feet. Well, skid marks are 100 feet. Which letter does that represent? Well, skid marks are m. So our m equals 100. So we take our formula, s equals 5 square root of m, and we substitute in 100 for m. Well, what's the square root of 100? Yeah, 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. Well, 50 what? S is measured in miles per hour. So 50 miles per hour. So we know that the minimum speed of the car that left skid marks of 100 feet 
was 50 miles per hour. That wasn't too bad. Have a question or a problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.